Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm painting little Christmas trees and I thought I would try and see how many I can do differently, all in different styles. These can be used for Christmas cards or for just hanging on your wall or cut them out and hang them on your Christmas tree. Lots of ideas for them and they're fun and easy to do. Just follow along. The steps are simple and have fun with watercolor. So let's begin. To start with, I'm just I'm using basically a triangle shape for all of these because it's an easy shape to deal with and we all know what that looks like. And I'm starting with just the palest yellow glow to, to kind of simulate the, the glow of candle, candle lights or lights on the Christmas tree. So as you can see, you can hardly see this and then, and then I'm going around the edge with water so that it has just a completely soft edge. While that's drying, on this one I don't care whether the paint runs, so I'm just going to drop in some spots and streaks like this with this yellow green. Little point on the top there. Just let it move. For the second tree, I'm doing something completely different. And the color I'm using is a Prussian blue. So we're going with really different colors this time. And again, starting with just kind of abstract streaks. As you can tell, this is really totally easy to do. And as I go along, I'm going to add some other colors to it so that by the top, it's a different color. So my next color is phthalo green. And, and what I'm doing here, just let me show you. I have my puddle here of Prussian blue and I'm just adding some phthalo green into it so that the, it's not a sudden change. And then just running those colors together. The idea is not to let it get too dry. And now I'm going to do that again, adding more phthalo green. leave a little bit of white space as you see fit. Now I'm completely taking the paint out of my brush and getting going with straight phthalo green for the next layer. And you can see the variation, it's really pretty. And next one is going to be a little bit of hooker's green mixed into that phthalo green. A little bit more of a dramatic change. Now I'm adding some paler green. This one is, is um, yellow green mixed into the other colors. Cleaning out my brush, picking up straight yellow green, and mixing it, look how it mixes on the paper. Just getting smaller as we go towards the top. So a lot of this color has already mixed in, no big deal. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. So you just do whatever works. Now I'm adding again, straight yellow green to take just to the top there. Little, little sprigs out there. I think I need just a little bit more width along here. Going back and picking up some of those colors. Now you can see how this is bleeding into here because it's wetter than what went before it. So one way to deal with that is just to hold it up so that the water flows that way instead of this way. And my table is slanted, so it's normally going to flow this way, even however slowly. Now I've taken all the water out of my brush and I'm going to soak it up so the brush will absorb it. So we'll just pick that up because I want the top of the tree to be quite light. I don't want too much of it to to blend backwards. And now all we have to do is let it dry. For my third tree, I'm going to go even more dramatic with the colors and I'm going to use some purples rising up. I'm starting at the bottom again and I'm going to use some purples and instead of doing branch shapes, I'm just going to go like this. And then I want to add more blue or greeny blue. This is a very abstract look, and that was my goal. And a lighter blue. 
I don't have it quite in the center here, but that's okay. You can always cut your paper afterwards. And then what will we put in here? Russian blue. No, a little bit of turquoise blue. Now I'm going to do something quite shocking and change brushes, use a bit smaller brush, pick up some pink and add it in here to make the top of the tree. Now I'll look at this one and see how this is bleeding back. I really didn't want that. So I'm going to pick it up with my brush like that and then I'm going to put some more of that turquoise in just to kind of camouflage it. I want, it to, want the change to be a little bit more sudden. So there we have an abstract tree. Once it's dry, we'll go on to the next steps. For this tree, the big change is gonna be the brush. Now this is um, an old, look at that bend in that brush. This is a, an old oil painting brush and I've had it forever and mostly I use it for making smooshy lines. So we're gonna try that and see how that turns out. My goal here is just keep it easy, keep it fast, and you can do all these in, you know, a few minutes. So oops, we need some moisture in that brush and then we need some color. And the thing about this brush is it holds a lot of water. So we're just going to go kind of like this. Turning the brush a little bit so that the pattern of, of dampness changes. is kind of symmetrical. A little more down here perhaps. There, see how easy that was? Now you could just leave it like that, but when it's dry I'm going to add some more things. So let's move on. Now for this one we're going to start with something, sort of a different method. So I'm using Matter Lake Light. That doesn't make sense. Okay, first I'm going to just sketch a little bit so that I don't go too off the rails here. So here's the top of our tree. I'm going to make some dots here resembling the shape. I'm going to make it a slightly different shape of tree as well, like that. And now I'm adding some ornaments and I'm going to do red balls. These are simple, so simple to make. You just do a circle, fill it in, all but a little white spot. The white spot represents a reflection which indicates that the thing is round. Basically, it tells the eye what to see, how to see it. They don't even have to be particularly perfectly round. This one's a little bit lumpy, and so what? I'm making them all the same color because it's easier. And the reason I'm making it easy is so that it's easy for you to just pick up a paintbrush get out your paints and start painting. These are just some really fun ideas for you to try. You can create all your Christmas cards in an afternoon or if you want to use them as tags on gifts or whatever, it's all good. I have a friend who told me recently that when she sees me paint, it's like I could never do that. And I really hope that you don't feel that way because I'm trying to keep things so simple and I actually, this is actually how I like to paint. I like to paint really simple things. I've done a lot of other more complicated stuff, no, no question about that. And I enjoy it just as much, but for these videos, the idea is to keep it simple. Now, I think I need one more over here and one more in here. The more I add, the more it seems to be lopsided, but that doesn't matter because when you add the branches, it evens everything out. So for this one, now that it's dry, I'm just going to go over it with water. Just keep it a little bit contained. And then I'm going to add some more color in different, different paints here. Let's try some of these. So we've got some different shades. I love the way it bleeds. Even down, running down the side is kind of cute. Although it's really quite wet over here. I don't want too much wetness there. You can see where the paint stopped here because it was there was a dry streak. 
Also, I don't really want that to run down the side only on one side, so I'm going to pick it up and by taking the moisture out of my brush, see how it, it'll soak it up as we go by. Now, I'll just let that dry again and then I'll decide what to do next. Now, I like this pop of pink at the top so much. I'm going to make a little pot for my tree. Very simple, and when it's dry, I'll put a little bit of shadow on it. Now, I think we're gonna use a little bit of brown and actually give this one a stem. I think it maybe needs a little pot too. Well, it's a bit off center, isn't it? Oh well, how about a red one? See, perfection eludes us, so I'm making this on center, lining up with that. coming close to the brown but not touching it because I don't want, want my colors to bleed into each other. So we'll give it a little bit of a, a barrel here to sit in. And I'm going to make this a little bit more centered so it's going to have a fat trunk so that it just makes a little bit more sense. On this tree I'm just going to start by adding a few little boughs in sap green. Notice how this one has so much water in it. I'm going to take the water out of my brush and soak some of that up because I don't want it to stand out so much. And then I can use it elsewhere. This is just random little marks. And again, too much water here. What happens is it, it pushes the color out to the edge and then it's not as it's not as smooth, it's just not as nice, so let's clean those up a little bit, a little more in there. And I could leave it like that. I mean that's that's totally cute. So if you want to, all you do is make those little balls, add some little green things. If you want to add a stem, you can add a stem, but it doesn't have to have one. So I might do a little more on it. Let's see. I think this one is so cute. And what I'm going to do is add ink to it. No particular design, just sort of this scribbly Christmas tree branch kind of look. So you don't need a pattern or anything with this. purple is so dark that you can almost not see the black. And then I'm going to add a little stem like that. Outline our little bucket and put in some slats because it's cute. And I'm going to make a star for the top. very abstract kind of star. There, that is all there is to it. And on this one, I'm just gonna put some sh shading along the side of the pail that it stands in, using just some alizarin crimson, and then going over it with a brush with like nothing in it basically, just water, so that we can soften those edges a little bit. And that's all you need to do. My telephone rang when I was in the middle of looking after this one. So it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to because I had to stop and, and listen to a client for a good 20 minutes. I'm just gonna draw this color in. I'm trying not to have any edge here. I find that green clings to a brush more than anything else. So there we have that. Now I want to add some darker green. Let me see, make sure that I've got, I have to hold it into the light to make sure that I, there's no dry patches. Which there were. No dry patches, please. Now my goal here was to add this dark green in spots like this so that it will run a little bit together, but basically so that there's variation in the color. It runs the most when it's the wettest. And now see how it's gone over there. 
That's okay. It's just, this is the part about watercolor that people say is difficult because it's difficult to control sometimes. It goes off and does its own thing. So I'm just going to add more moisture to that one so hopefully it'll spread out more. This one is like going off on a tangent totally. And I want to get rid of this line along the side because that wasn't what I was after. Now that this one is dry, I'm going to add some gold accents. And I think um, bright, I think I'll go with bright gold. Let's put a little water in this. They're a little bit grainy, so sometimes you gotta get them really soupy to make the color come to life. So you can see it on my brush here. And all I'm going to do is make some tiny dots, just in, in little white spots. Nothing really big and showy. So it's as though you came across this snow-covered tree in the forest and it has these little gold ornaments on it. Just make sure I've got some balance in here. I think that's all, about all it needs. And now I will make a small gold star. And there's our tree. As cute as this is all by itself, I decided I wanted to add some more color to it because the red is so strong, I thought it, it could really warrant having a deeper green in here. So I'm just going to go in with my hooker's green mixed fairly strongly and thickly and try not to get too much water, which I have just blown. It's too wet, too much wet and not enough color. So I'm just going to add some little flicks of darker green in here. You could completely fill it up if you wanted to. There's just so many choices and not one of them would be a mistake. So I'm avoiding touching the lighter green that's there already, but I don't have to. So it's just a, an idea and you know where ideas come from. There are always more. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I think we'll just maybe leave it at that. As sometimes happens, things don't always turn out like you planned, and this tree is a prime example. So I'm gonna just try something different, and believe me, I am totally winging this. So I give you permission to make a mess and do what you want with it and see what happens. Sometimes what happens is that you end up with something surprising. So I'm gonna just put glue, some glitter glue like this. Kind of blobby but uh not really sure what to do with it use one of these little things to spread it out a bit and i'm going to put on some red as well just spread it around with this little cosmetic swab. Well, I have to say that looks fairly pathetic. So I'm going to just spread this around and see if that improves it. I mean, glitter can always help, right? And when it's dry, you won't see the lines quite so much. So we'll do that with the red and the gold the same. Fill in all the spaces, it's looking better. And now I want to add something that hopefully will resemble a silver star. So we'll start with the blob and I'm just gonna pull it in five directions. Surprisingly, it actually works. I think I'm even going to move this glitter out a little bit so it covers up that green where it kind of went crazy. I think it's been salvaged, surprisingly enough. So here are our five little trees. Yeah, which one do you like best? I can't decide. Put a note in the comments and just tell me which one you like best or which style of painting 
you found the most fun. I like them all. But yeah, I just like them all. And you could do so much more if you wanted to. Like, I could put more detail on this. I could put more black on that. I could add a stem and a pot to this, and, and I might. But I kind of like it how it is. If I wanted to, I could add a pearlescent paint to any part of it in those colors. Or a little bit of glitter just dabbed on here and there. And with this one, I like the subtlety of the the little gold dots and remember how easy that was to make with just a scruffy paintbrush like this. So I hope you'll give them a try. Um, pick any one you want or, or all five. They really didn't take very long and have fun with it. Before you go please remember to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you can get the notifications and also have a look at my other videos. There's some other really fun things going on and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.